Doing good, it's brother. Good, How you doing, man. family? You know, smooth, smooth, smooth. Staying out of the way. No doubt. It's cooler. No doubt, no doubt. No, I definitely, I'm happy that you were able to tap into this because I think you have some personal introspective, you know what I'm saying, on this topic. And my question was, you, know, you would know better than anybody, what motivated Devin to decide to get back on the legacy track, right? Like to get away from, he seems like he wants to be undisputed again and he wants to chase down these champions where, you know, Bill pretty much was like, you know, he's chasing the biggest money he can get. Did something happen, do you think, that made him like refocus back on who he is, in my opinion? I mean, I haven't, I haven't had a conversation with Devin about the situation, or haven't heard him elaborate on the situation. But from my assumptions is what I'm thinking. Just me knowing, you know, pugilist energy and how, you know, you know, champions think. I just think that he just looked at a situation where he just like, you know, the more you train, the more confident you get. He just said, "All right, now I'm ready. I, I think I could." put everything together over here where I'm at too because now I'm up here. See, it's it's different to it's different when you wish in upon something and when you have something that you're working forward to. You know what I'm saying? Meaning when you're in the division, I mean when you got it and it's yours and you're working towards it and there's a goal that you set, you're trying to accomplish, it's, it's different than sitting back going, well I wish you know I had a Bentley. I wish I had a Rolls Royce. But when you got a Rolls Royce, it's a different thing. Now you got to, well, I got to make sure that these, I keep up with these oil changes. I got to make sure I keep up with these, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. It's, it's a different type of responsibility. You know right. what I'm saying? So, you know, I think that once he got to the weight class and accomplished what he accomplished, his mindset was just like, all right, I could, I could, I could, I could, I could, I could sew this up too. Right. I could sew this up. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? I mean, I think that when he was at 35, you know, his mind and things were set on 35 things, right. you know, set, set at the the 35 class and, and who was there and what was going on. But now he got there, he looked around and said, okay, this is this is nothing. I can do this. And so now he wants to be great again, you know? Yeah. I think it's the best route for him, man. I think that's who he is. I think, you know, I know him. If, if somebody was to ask me to describe who he is, I'd say he's somebody who's chasing um, legacy and greatness. That's who I'd say. I, I wouldn't say he's somebody who's chasing antics or, you know, I mean, God bless him in his Ryan Garcia fight. But, you know, I think Ryan Garcia just dragged this thing into a situation to where, you know, dare I say it's a little bit beneath him. You know what I'm saying? Some of the stuff he's been going through with him. And it's like, at least if there was a belt on the line, it'd be worth my time. I mean, there ain't listen, even no belt on I, the line. I say this. I <laughs> say this. Me personally, I think Ryan Garcia – He's doing the fool's goal, you know what I'm saying? He's throwing, he's throwing the fool's goal bait out there. He's, 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 he's allowing us to see exactly what he, he wants us to see. Right. He's controlling the narratives of where he's going with this. Because, you know, I, I know the guy. He's a young guy. He, has, he, he hasn't had enough fights yet to be punch drunk. So it's not like he's punch drunk or that like that, you know what I mean? Like, he's a very well sane young guy you know what i'm saying and i think that you know he ran into something where he feels that you know this is this, this is a form of training this is a form of a uh, pugilist uh situation where you play mind games right mind games is a is a part of boxing you know what i'm saying it's for me to know what the opponent don't know you know what i'm saying for me to stare him to the left and then i come right you know what i'm saying so it's a form of um uh, of mind tricks that I feel like Ryan play. I don't think anything is wrong with him. I don't think he's crazy. You know, people say he's crazy. None of that. He's a very sane, sane young guy. He's a very, you know. And I think that, you know, this is some of the tactics that he's using to try to defeat, you know, Devin Haney. Yeah, I agree. But do you think, do you think that these tactics might have been working positively for this fight at one point? But at some point, do you think there's any negative effect on the value of this fight as far as a lot of people just don't think it's going to be a competitive fight. They're just expecting Devin to just run him over. And I think parts of what sell a fight is the competitive nature of the fight. You know what I'm saying? Like you want, you don't know who's going to win, but it looks like it's, it's become way more one-sided right now. Like, like Ryan's just going to get spanked. Do you think like he participated in that narrative being steered in that direction? And that could have, you know, you know, vicariously affected it in a negative way, adversely affected the value of the fight to where maybe it might affect pay-per-view sales or seats in the in, in the building, interest in the actual fight? I mean, I don't, I 
don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think that this is a formula of boxing. This is a formula of boxing. It's just done in different things. You know, you know, it's just coming out because it's Ryan Garcia, and this is the first time we've seen him use this kind of formula, being the kind of guy that he is. You know what I'm saying? People didn't expect this kind of formula from him this early in his career. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is more of a older tactic. You know what I'm saying? That he's that 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 that, that he's doing, and um, you know, but you know, like I said, at any time anything can happen. You know, and and, and do I think that? It's a tactic, yes. Do I think that it's a tactic that can hurt and spoil the fight? No. Do I think that it's a tactic that, that's going to work against Devin Haney? No. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, so, right. you know what I'm saying? You know, tactics or no tactics. Tactics or no tactics, Devin's going to be 100% ready and in shape for the fight. See, that's what boxing comes down to. Boxing comes down to preparation. When you're prepared... For the event, or better than the what the event calls for, you're always gonna do great. No matter where you land at, you're gonna do great. The purpose of this type of tactic is to make the opponent get lackadaisic and not be prepared for this situation. You know what I'm saying? Right. Distract him. I think right, but I think that the kind of guy that we're dealing with now, with Devin, you know, that, that, that that's Devin's always prepared for a fight. He's always been known from day one to to carry the hard work, you know what I'm saying, syndrome, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, hey, it is what it is. Yeah.